My name is Jeroen ten Brinke and I once did the sound design for this crazy production. The idea is that the audience doesn't know that we're turning, so um, we cannot make them see that we're turning. And during the show, we don't we know that we're rotating because it's in the papers everywhere. But sometimes we go the other way around than we think, so we completely um, we completely lose the feel of direction. We started with a Cadec, with an RME matrix. Um, uh, that was the first idea, and then we thought, oh, let's take a few SD70s and, and make it all happen. But in the end, uh, Meyer came up with Dimitri. Dimitri is a platform um, based on the old LCS uh, Q station software, um, which has the uh, one of my favorite things, which is a speaker mapping. So we can draw the speakers in a map uh, and then by uh, uh, an input of a device, we can tell it to move there and there together with the data of the rotation of the house. So um, that means uh, we could start um, independently with rehearsals of positions. So for us, if we send we have a move bus, which is a, a subgroup, which goes into uh, the matrix. When we send it to this bus, the sound is always uh, straight for us. Um, but we can also choose a bus which is on the left of us, no matter where we are, um, where we are positioned at that moment. So it's a matrix in a matrix. Now we have 14 uh, clusters. And we turn in between those clusters. Uh, so um, um, we use ribbons to, uh, to make sure we don't have the horizontal negative effect of horns. Um, but with the ribbons it's, it's a quite a, a good spread. Um, we use their widest cabinets which are 120 degrees. So we are sure that we always have audio. Uh, from left to right, which is pretty important. Otherwise, we have we would have continuous phasing um, and, and calm filter effects between all those clusters. And the first drawing I get, I got, um, uh, I just put it in a, a CAD program, and then uh, I made all the versions from eight speakers till twenty, and with speaker thirteen uh, or fourteen, with fourteen hangs. I could see that we would, could create a left and a right and a symmetric uh, audio picture for every scene possible uh, around the audience. Um, so we could leave the distance nearly the same and have a symmetric um, thing uh, going on. So that's why I ended up with 14 and 15, 16, and nothing did work, only the 14 version and all. I'm a pretty big fan of it if it's up to theater. Um, theater has a lower levels than a standard rock and roll or event business. Um, and since we're doing theater, uh, it's extremely usable. They sound ex extremely clear and beautiful. Um, so that's why I chose it. 144 by 144 matrix. So it's about 50 auxes, 92 subgroups, and the rest are different scents. Um, and so the inputs, it's uh, 40 radio mics, uh, I think uh, 50 sound effects, um, and the band 48, and some communications, and all added up to uh, 144. You see one third of the amps. We see a little desk for uh, a monitoring. 
uh, but the rest of the band doesn't want to sit, so we have the one mic left and the spare input. We have the two input units for the band. They go on the network here. And then we have um, one third of the cabinets. Uh, so we come, f come from the network, we go to 24 analog outs, we go into the uh, machines analog. So we have no A to D or D to A conversions. We only do that once. Next. Dimitri is fully implemented with a not really ready AVB. Um, you can see AVB as Dante, um, but it has its clock implemented. Uh, so it's not an audio stream where the clock is on, but it's an implemented clock. Um, and in my opinion, when the clock is done well in the studio, you'll hear uh, uh, a complete rest in the mix. Um, and you can make a complete open sound. So I think the clock is one of the most important uh, features of AVB. The other features are not really ready, that, that uh, uh, equipment recognizes other equipment automatically. And that's a matter of time. Um, so it will be, one day it will be a plug and play network, while by Dante you have to program and tell how many lines, but with AVB in the future um, y uh, you can just plug any, any stuff in and it tells you what the possibilities are and then it asks you what you want to do with it. So it's a completely, it's a kind of plug and play version of Dante. That's the whole idea. Where the basic uh, audio uh, from most manufacturers is now 96 kilohertz, 24 bit. Um, and that is a great standard, of course. And now slowly we see all the standard audio mixes going there. Um, but I knew uh, a long time ago already that it would make such a difference especially in more complex mix mixes that you'll have more air and more room um, to uh, to realize everything you have in your head there's four networks uh, two of them are backup the, we have a main uh, control network uh, for the Dimitri system uh, and we have a main audio network for the Dimitri system. And therefore we also have two backups uh, in case one of them fails or doesn't want to work. We start top left. This is the uh, uh, main uh, uh, control uh, network, the backup control network, main AVB, backup AVB. So that's the four networks. And this is our multi-core. It's, um, you might zoom in. It's the standard optical cable. Uh, four of them, that's uh, all that uh, is running through from uh, this part of the land to, uh, to our turning audience. Um, and everything goes through th those few optical lines. This is the uh, the 24 input module. Um, this is another 24 input module that adds up to 48. Then we have the matrix module. And the matrix module makes from 72 plus 72, 144. Ins and outs. Then for our web page and uh, sound effects, which are started from uh, various um, uh, various places. Uh, we have a machine that has a, a hard drive and another hard drive and they check each other if there's any differences and they warn us if there are any. So uh, it should play back the same thing always, theoretically. Um, we see a spare, a spare Dimitri stuff and we see a backup desk which is uh, made from a DM1000 with Rocknet. The monitoring is done with 49 auxes uh, and they, uh, from instrument to instrument, they, uh, 
the varying levels from scene to scene. Uh, because we have a, such a complex setup, we need to go from uh, one scene to the other, so we always have cross planning stuff. Um, and they need to hear each other because otherwise they don't have their cues. Uh, and sometimes the sets are 30 meters apart from each other, so it's impossible for them to hear each other acoustically. Um, uh, and we have a few panels that uh, give back uh, uh, audio for the singers. Um, they, are, they are such bad panels that theoretically they cannot feedback because what comes out of it is, is completely different from what we put in once. Uh, but the actors hear something back and that, that, will make, that makes them feel good. So the band is basically for the audience seeing, it's, it can be on the left or on the front left or on the front right, it's always somewhere different. That's why we don't want to hear it um, acoustically, that's why it's closed. What we see is very interesting there. You might even want to take a, clo a close up. That's a part of Dimitri. That is a client. Um, with four knobs. And the machine is online. It's for us for, uh, to start click tracks. That's a pretty cool feature that you can make web pages. You can almost everything you want uh, can be done with Dimitri. Of course, not everything. Here you see the Marshall tops, which is an interesting feature too. Which go full sometimes, but we build it in a bit of concrete. So in this, uh, here the, the Marshall cabinets are inside this box. This is the monitor desk. And a lock, because it's cheap. And has a lot less, less latency, of course. And then we have the, the Avium master stations, one for the drums, the other one for the rest. A power supply and a spare power supply. And then we have the Leslie, and then I might have to drop this mic. Hey. Vintage. <laughs> what we hear now is the um, uh, a speaker uh, hung uh, from a booth to see which is directioned to the sea and then via reflections comes into the audience so we don't have any uh, in one scene the uh, the actors fall into the water and from that moment it's a playback and the sound comes out of the uh, little line array boxes there uh, but it, it sounds like it's still coming out of the water Let's go to the front edge of the stage. Here we see all the, uh, the video panels, all the four video panels are closed. Uh, so we have a 180 degree picture. We are sound effects testing. We see, uh, because our line arrays are small, pretty, pretty small. Um, so we use six cabinets and then we hang in a very old fashioned double 15 inch speaker next to it to have a little bit of balls. Um, and then we realized that we can't make the five and a half meters uh, going up uh, in total uh, with their angles. So what I did, I just um, didn't put any sound on the first six rows. And the first six rows listened to uh, reflections of the speaker grid 
uh, for the top end and uh, the mids come out of the little speakers in between the in between the seats. There's 160 small speakers, there are 22 in front. So everybody has his own stereo and his own delay time. Every row at least. And then it's left, right, left, right, left, right. And then we have the bridge with the three delays, the left, center and the right. And then we can go to the desk. So of course we have a, a nice front of house because we were there from the first minute and we see the right relation between uh, the light desk and the sound desk. This is how it should be. What we see here is all stuff which hangs on a network. It's all clients um, on a network. We have. Uh, five fader modules with 16 faders, so in total 180, no, as I say, 88 faders. And then we have uh, three screens. Let's go to the first screen. Here we see the, the speaker outputs, 14 of them. They're all linked to nodes, and a node is a, a physical output in our case. And from those nodes, we link with delays and different gains, we link them to other nodes. And those nodes are also physical outputs. All the nodes you see here are front fills or delays. And all the nodes in the circle you see are, are our 1 to 14 outputs. And you see a pair, because we um, drive the bottom of the line array different from the top, because when it's on our back, uh, we want to use it for surround stuff. Then we see the matrix next to it. If, if, if we would turn now, we would see all these levels change automatically. So Then there's a... Um, a cue console where we um, start sound effects with. This is all standard LCS or... Um, web page. Yeah, now we see a web page. So this is the web page for the DSM. She's sitting somewhere else. But she can look on this web page and start sound effects from here. From everywhere, from the building which is pretty cool. There we see the um, picture of the MD. And then we see uh, cast. And how does it work? We can just click a channel. So we can click a channel and then we have a 10 band EQ, compressor, limiter, everything we would ever need to, uh, to, uh, to make it sound as we like. There's, there's not a, a console existing which uh, can uh, do this. So we had to, there was no other way to, uh, to make it all happen, like it's happening now. So um, yeah, we had to, uh, we were forced to work instead of, uh, <laughs> uh, Dimitri's great, you can make, uh, with the Q console, you can make every button can be, your favorite button. So if I press this now, um, we hit the EQ again. And uh, every button we have to program and tell it what it has to be in which scene. So every button can do everything, basically. Almost everything again. <laughs> 